Hello everybody, Princess Navarra here, and we're back at Contemporary Resort for one thing the princess cannot wait to do. The California Grill. It just speaks to her little California heart. They have a new menu for the 50th, sort of like a prefix deal, some other items that we want to go check out, see if the vegan things have changed. And I broke okay. out both my good knees and my good lotion for this, so this had better be good. Be sure to contemporary. You heard the girl. A dining experience 50 years in the making. In 1971, Top of the World opened on the top floor of Disney's Contemporary Resort, offering a unique dining experience with magical views. Over time, the location evolved into the restaurant that we know and love today, California Grill. From the spectacular views of Magic Kingdom Park and Seven Seas Lagoon to the seasonally inspired menus by world-renowned chefs, California Grill remains a favorite for our guests. In honor of this very special anniversary, our chefs are delighted to offer you a three-course menu with dishes inspired by past favorites as well as new market fresh creations. Look for the 50 symbol on the menu to find our anniversary inspired selections. We hope you enjoy this magical experience and appreciate you being part of this most magical celebration. And then there's the 50s. Oh wow, it's really sweet. It is, yeah, it's sweet wine. Let me have one white one is sweet and one red one is sweet. So we have a nice sweet vegan wine. Very sweet. Now Old Soul, the other vegan wine that is available here is two of the least expensive wines. The wine itself is very good. It's very, very sweet. I quite like it. I would give it three out of five red grapes. Definitely go though, peruse the specialty menu because there was one drink, their actual specialty cocktail is $137. They have three ounce pours that are $1,000. This is one of the very expensive drink menu places. So we stuck with a nice $49 bottle of wine that we can split together and would be cheaper than ordering two cocktails on our own. Already, you know this is no La Crepes de La Paris because you know what? They know how to pour up a wine here. Uh, nice deep pour, nice beautiful glass, which, you know, of course I'm ruining with my man bare hands. Let's dive in. As bougie as I can possibly do. It does have a little sweet and a little tingle to it. I was worried it was gonna be too sweet. But it's just got a nice balance to it with the fizz and the sweet. I can do this. Give that a three and a half out of five plus. We have new rolls. They are vegan. There's one for each of us, which is cool. And then we have the beautiful sauce that we know and love from California Grill that's always here and always vegan with lots of oil, lots of tomato, lots of garlic, lots of goodness. It's butamous, butamous. This is a bigger bite than I should probably be taking. But I love the channel and the community more than this huge bite. Like a billion times more. Guys. Oh. Already gets points for the poppy seeds. I love anything with poppy seeds. Poppy seeds are babe. Poppy seeds are life. I like this bread much better than the what was it like a sourdough that they had the last time we came here? I'll eat this without the like dipping. I only like 10 of these. It's just, this is like poppy seed heaven. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
four and a half out of five poppy seeds. You know the princess loves this community when she cheers you guys with her bread. That that's special. She would choose bread over me any day of the week. I love this this delicious mixture they put together. Always a little bit oily for me, but you know you can drain some of it out before you put it on there. A delicious mix of veggies and like a nice little dip. It's something different than just like plain olive oil and balsamic or olive oil and garlic. I like the touch. Mm. And on that bread, that's food worthy of the 50th of Walt Disney World. That's some delicious bread. That's a four and a half out of five bucks for me. So tasty. Welcome to my fine dining apple salad. This salad right here has honey nut squash. So this is your honey nut squash right here. Radishito, which is over here. The almond feta cheese, which is this. And then we have some granola. And then they made a vinaigrette over it. So it's um, an avant-garde salad. How about that? Fine dining salad. I guess I need a knife. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try and take a little bit of everything. I destroy this salad. I suppose it's meant to be destroyed though, right? Oop, all right, I'm taking this apple and I'm taking a little piece of this. Oop. Oh no, and then I lost my squash. Okay, before my apple falls off. I almost feel like I just ate an apple pie. It's very sweet. The granola is a nice like crunch to it. Oh. Oh, I'm feeling a little heat coming up in the back now. Oh wow. This huge heat just creeped up on me. Maybe from the um the honey nut squash? I don't know. This is an interesting salad. This is Salad is making me feel and taste things that I'm not usually used to. So I guess it is fair to say that it is an avant-garde salad. Um, for creativity and uniqueness, I think I'm gonna give it a four out of five apple salads. Small, but unique, different, good. Heirloom and the word salad together are always a mixed bag. You never really know what you're going to get. But I would definitely say that this is, if you're going to enter salad as art, this would probably be it. Because you have uh, what looks like an oasis of flowers on a plate, even though you know you got apple slices and granola and everything else. It looks like a tropical California garden. Maybe that's what they were getting at. Either way, let's go ahead and dive in here and pull a princess and try to get some of everything definitely what I consider to be like an experienced salad more than a filling salad that's for sure Ooh. definitely has a nice sort of sweet sweet and tangy to it I'm guessing that the heat I think they hid some like wasabi peas or wasabi something in here that uh, gives that little kick. It's probably like a one and a half, two on the spice scale. Remember, temper that because I'm a spice head and I don't feel anything on the inside. But this is actually a good salad. I think it'd be a nice starter for any dish. Any plant based or otherwise. Three and a half out of five plus. I don't have two forks, but I'm still gonna try to toss my salad.
Yeah, this is a really tossy. This is like spiralized apple. I'm not mad at it. It's just not a salad you can toss. So it doesn't toss my salad, even though it's good. Yes, I found some pomegranate seeds. Fun fact about me, I'm Persian. We've been here for a while, you know that. We love our pomegranates. We put on our rice, we put on our everything. Pomegranates are a win. So you have it all here. I don't sort of like turn it diagonal, but you have this salmon, tuna, this uh, cascade rolls, as they call it. It definitely looks like a cascade of things. You have a little bit of everything here. A little bit of seaweed salad, ginger, wasabi, this like, uh, I think it's wasabi uzu cream over here, and then like a little cute little like soy gel here on the back side. It looks kind of cute. I took this at the waiter's recommendation over the uh, basically duck pizza, but always go with what your waiter says. They know much better than you. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that, get a dab of the cream right here, a little bit of this soy gel. I'm gonna have a piece of Sunny California. The flavor is like a legit tied away from beginning to end. You got a bright beginning with the fresh fish and that sort of like sauce. The nice little crunch of the sesame seeds ending with like that savory soy gel. That's just good. Yeah, the waiter definitely was not kidding. That's a solid four and a half out of five polish for me. I think my only problem with it is there's not more. <laughs> over here inhaling his fish and I'm enjoying my salad because every third bite the flavors change and I'm totally here for this. This is a magical salad. I never thought I'd say that about a salad but this one is magical. We have a mushroom ravioli the mushroom ravioli <clears throat> it is a handcrafted mushroom ravioli it has uh chanterelle mushrooms honey nut squash an herbed pistachio pesto and then a truffle mushroom cream so it is literally mushroom on mushroom on mushroom Uh, I guess cut one of these. At least you can see what the pasta looks like on the inside. It's it's very very stuffed. Forces with me. I'm with the force of forces with me. I'm with the force of forces with me. I'm with the force of forces with me. It's not super mushroomy. I actually think I might be able to eat this dish and not be like. interesting texture to it and maybe it's just like off to me because I'm, I'm not a fan of mushrooms at all I'm really gonna try my best to eat the whole thing we'll see what happens we're gonna five ravioli I always think especially at restaurants like California Grill what are you trying to tell me with this dish because Restaurants are contemporary and find out if they're really trying to tell you some sort of story what they're cooking. Uh, are they trying to tell me that California is the fungus on the backside of the United States? No. <laughs> For all of our community in California, I'm sorry. I'm a Floridian. I just can't resist poking fun at you guys. <laughs> Either way, back to the dish. So you have these 
humongous pieces of mushroom with mushroom ravioli, which is like, it's like the princess's kryptonite, so I worry about how she's gonna receive anything that has this level of mushroom in it. And this is like, hey guy, I heard you like mushroom in your mushroom, so you put mushroom in your mushroom in your mushroom for dinner. It's not bad. However, it feels like if you made Hobbiton a food dish, this would be it. I feel like I'm eating straight earth. Not in the texture-wise, but like it's a very earthy flavored ravioli, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The sauce pairs well with it. The mushrooms are good. It's got a good flavor, but if, if you do not like mushrooms, I fear you might not like this dish. However, it's still what I consider to be above average. The plating, the creation, the sauce, everything. Still enough to get a three and a half out of five plus. This is probably one of the largest efforts I've ever made to eat a dish. I just have to psych myself out and tell myself that it's something else and the consistency is something else because it's just so hard to eat this much mushroom. And it's $90 a person, so like, I paid $90 for a dish at a light. I'm forcing myself to eat. I do have to admit, it's a little bit better when you get a bite of pesto with it. And then I've been putting onion on top of it, and that's been kind of helping too. But still, this consistency is really hard. As far as I can go, I, I can't do any more. I'm quitting. But that that honey squash, that's fine. That really helps a lot. What was? Honey, honey nut squash. It's honey nut squash. This this honey nut squash is fire. It helps. It's sweet. It really helps cut with the the mushrooms. But it yeah, I just. This is too mushroomy for me. Mushroom sauce. It's mushroom on mushroom on mushroom. But that's just too much for me. I can't. Contemporary is out here throwing bricks of fish at people. So, again, on the waiter's recommendation, I got the uh, grouper, which is a nice black grouper on like a bed of rice and a sauce with some greens. I feel like this is another swamp inspired dish. Now if the princess's food was telling me something about California, I feel like this is telling me something about Florida. Possibly. Either way, let's dig in. We got these shards on top. A saffron nice thick piece of grouper the rice the sauce let's just go ahead and get one big bite nice flaky white fish and all right true most of the flavor is contained within the sauce and the rice it's very light and just in taste. It's definitely not the best fish I had on property. I don't think the fish that I had at Steakhouse 71 was better. But it's not horrible. And I don't know if I can come back again just for this. Three out of five bucks. I'm not gonna lie, there are pieces of that grouper near the end of the bottom that were extremely hard to cut. We kind of rubbery. I don't know how I feel about that. This dessert is the last dessert, or this dessert is the same dessert that we had the last time that we were here, except there was one less donut than there was before. So it's just lavender sugar donuts with a coconut, like frozen sorbet, 
There's a blueberry gin jam and then a pistachio crumble all around. I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of everything. Remind me of Aaron McKenna's. No, I'm mad at that because I like Aaron McKenna's. But I kind of wanted something a little bit more forward. It's okay. I wouldn't proactively come here for this dessert. I will give it like two and a half out of five desserts. Overall, I feel like the, the vegan value for this meal is like, I would not come here. The vegan donut survives. I don't remember loving this thing last time. It's an odd thing during the fine dining restaurant. We're taking something basic like donuts and trying to elevate it. I appreciate the attempt. I remember last time I thought it was sort of, I think I remember correctly, sort of like eating sand? Yes. Hopefully <laughs> it's improved, but from what I'm seeing, I don't have a whole lot of faith. Some of that pistachio, get some of that. A little bit of the sherbet, say the princess some. Okay. It has changed a little bit. Now it's like kind of like sand with rocks in it. I'm not trying to be mean, but uh, I think it's just the donut that needs work. I don't know if like this sort of like lavender donut with like the consistency, I think, of the donut is sort of the problem. Like the flavors aren't bad, but the consistency and the texture is what kills it for me. It's definitely, if you have a problem with weird textures, I don't think you'll like this. Two out of five plus. So here we have the dessert special, which is a plated story of five executive chefs, apparently. The five executive chefs this restaurant has had since it opened, commenting on the new chef who apparently likes carrot cake. So carrot cake, lemon cake, uh, honey cake, uh, chocolate mousse cake, and then this uh, some sort of cheesecake with a fruit topping, which is cute because they all look like definite mini cakes. And you got the 50th medallion in the middle. Um, let's work our way counterclockwise. Some of this carrot cake, which got like some gold flake on it for the 50th. That's kind of cute. Tastes like carrot cake. What a normal bear fashion, being a moron, what kind of icing does carrot cake have on it? Kind that necessitates magic pills. We're gonna need two for this. All right, now that I've made that attempt in my own life, let's continue. Now we have the lemon cake with like a little blueberry on here. I'm not a huge fan of lemon, so I don't expect to enjoy this. Two little insides there. That's not bad. It looks very lemon forward, but the blueberry sort of balances it out. Three out of five points. That's for the uh, attempted murder guard cake. I'd say two and a half out of five points. Now we have here our honey based cake with a little bee on top. I like little touches like that. I'm sure it won't sting the princess.
to like a shortcake type, type of consistency. And the B is actually chocolate. Three out of five plus. We have the chocolate mousse here. A little bit of chocolate here. That's basically chocolate pudding with dark chocolate. Powerful, but good. Three and a half out of five plus. And then we have the cheesecake. Don't worry, I'm gonna go very easy on this one. The teeniest of corners. A little fruit. Ooh. Fruit's bigger than a piece of cheesecake. Ooh, that's good. If I could eat cheesecake, three and a half out of five plus. By far my favorite. And then we have the medallion on top of uh, some sort of jellish thing. Like a raspberry, sort of like a uh, foam, basically. To the 50th. Tasting the touch of raspberry. I definitely think my cheesecake is a favorite thing. Of all the plates, the whole plate I'll give a uh, solid three out of five plus. It's an interesting combination of cakes, but you're gonna have a favorite. California Grill. Interesting 50th experience. We've got the heat of both of the menus, which is a cool little touch, sort of like remembering the thing. It's filled with a lot of memories of Disney, but honestly, and I'm sure the princess agrees with me here, she's already said, not worth $90 prefix. Definitely not. 100% not. Not even like, maybe 60, not 90. Hmm. And then like the, um, there's a $39 per person wine pairing that you can do for the prefix. It is three ounce pours with each plate. So we split a $49 bottle of wine and had more than three ounces per pour. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I know that each dish definitely had its own touch. They definitely threw a lot into it. It was definitely. very creative. Yes, for 100% creative. We like your apps. We like your apps. I, was, uh, I love my salad, as you saw. Did not like my main, did my, not like my dessert. My fish got very chewy at the end. The cakes were good, but it's more like, it felt more like uh, something they give you at like, like Chef Mickey than like a fine dining yeah, dessert. I would agree. I'd rather uh, go to Steakhouse 71 than California Grill at this point. But I, I definitely want to know, like, what do you guys think? Is this what you expect from California Grill? Do you expect more like, fine dining dishes and that price though that I price feel like hurts me they're a victoria bit. albert's light Ugh, even that is more of a compliment victoria than I albert's recipe. light because look we got menus to take home True. we had a premium payment thing we had our own server well not our own server like they do victorian albert's but eh, victorian albert's light like most of the things when you go to uh california grill you're paying for the view so i get it i definitely get it but I want to know what you guys think. Do you think the, 90, the value is there for a $9 prefix bill? If so, that's in the comments. If there's anywhere else you'd like to see us go, bro, and if we're anywhere else, by all means, that's going to be a place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And we will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And like this video. And if you don't comment, and at least, you know, say a comment or something, how are you now that we should spend $300 at California Grill every six months? We definitely shouldn't. You heard the bear.